there is a very thin line between mercy, Rachmanut, to Rachmanut de Sitra Achra, to foreign mercy, mercy of the other side. A lot of people are failing and mistaking on that and causing huge damage because of what the Yetzara is playing with their heart, playing with their mind and telling them, no, don't be cruel, don't be hard, you need to be Rahman, you need to have mercy. And those people have mercy because of following the advice of Yetzara. Those people have mercy on cruel people that are going to go and take everything you're going to give them and going to use it against you against your children, against your neighbors, against your nation. So what's the use to have mercy on them? If you're going to give charity to someone that his purpose with your money is to destroy you, so why are you going to give him the money? It's crazy. But the Yetzara is tricking the person, like Abenu is writing in the first Torah, that's how he opens the Likut Moran, and telling us that the Yetzara is dressing himself in mitzvot, and he shows to you, no, listen, you can be cruel, I'm Israel, Rachmanim bin Rachmanim, they need to be nice and kind to everyone. No, so what? If they hurt you, so what? If they insulted you, so what? So what? But they're so poor and they're just kids and they're so young. So what if when they become 17, so they start stabbing and killing people, innocent people in the street? So what? Now they're just five. Now they're three. And you don't know how to deal with it. It's a problem. You look in front of your eyes, there is a three years old kid. You can't touch him. You're not supposed to. You feel like your hands are tied. But you know that in five, ten years, he start going and, and, and being dangerous to you. And so... What I'm saying now is not politics. It's not talking about Ishmaelim, about the um, Palestinians. I'm not talking politics. I'm talking about the Yetzirah. We just brought that as an example. You can find yourself with your son, that you have so much mercy on him, and you say, no, I understand him, he's tired, no, and you just give him power to, 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 to stay lazy. And he will never going to wake up of bed. He will never going to go out of bed. Because, and, and you're creating that reality. But from the other side, so Yetzara is tricking the person. And the thing is, the Yetzara doesn't have no problem. I said it many times. He couldn't care less from which side of the cliff to push the person. He doesn't care if he's going to kill you from the left side or from the right side. If he's going to destroy you as a criminal, as a sinner, or as a Talmud Chacham, as a genius. He doesn't care. Adraba, even more so, it can be funnier if you're going to destroy Talmud Chacham. You're going to take him with all of his Gemarot, with all of his Mishnayot. So for the Yetzirah, he doesn't care in which way he's going to tilt you from the truth. In, if, 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 if finally you're in his hands, you're under his control, so he's happy. Mekubala Eloki, to fail the Mekubala Eloki in Avonot, so that, that's it. So, it's a celebration, or you're learning Kabbalah, you're making Yehudim, and then Yetzirah doesn't care. So what the person going to do? If you understand the, 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 the risk, the problem that we're at, because even if you're going to try to, you say, okay, you know what, I'm going to try to stay away from the Yetzirah. I'm not going to sin, I'm going to keep Torah, I'm going to learn Torah, I'm going to keep mitzvot, I'm going to learn halachot, I'm going to be... I'm going to live in a religious area, I'm going to have good kosher friends, everyone keeping Shabbat, everything is kosher. And you don't know that the Yetzirah is jumping between your neighbors, inside the Beit Midrash, between the pages. So it's like there's no solution. If to be religious would be the solution and not to be secular, it would be the right way. So okay, life is easy. But you find yourself getting into Haredi communities, to Hasidi communities, into the depths of what that you assumed until now that's going to be the right path for you to stay away from Yetzirah. 
And then you see the Tova there. <laughs> the devil is dancing on the tables. So it's, it's, it's a problem. So what's the solution, right? That's the question. <clears throat> there is only one solution. The solution is your point of truth. The solution is how much you are ready to sacrifice and to admit on your mistakes, on your failures, how much you're going to push yourself toward the truth and to be ready to admit on your mistakes. That's the only solution. The solution will never going to be external, will never going to be in changing your outfits, your dress codes, having long peot, bigger kippah, longer beard, cover your head, cover your face with ra'ala, wearing those shaltzni'ut, uh, all of those, uh, um, what, coverings, imaginations. If you think you're going to be more modest, if you're going to wear uh, 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 coverings on your body, how can you, how can you know? Modesty is an inner thing. Modesty is in your soul. Can be a person that looks like Admor and he's the worst sinner of them all. Can be a woman that dressed like the most modest woman and that woman literally, she's a prostitute. You can never know. You can never know. So for yourself, first of all, you need to know that's not my solution. I'm searching for my inner truth. What is the real truth? Like David Amelech is saying to Hashem, Adricheni Bamitecha, I want you to guide me in your truth, not in my truth. Not in, for me, it's very easy. No, I'm going to be from that's it. It's very easy. No, I'm eating only, but that's a dacharadit. That's easy. That's easy. It doesn't make the meat kosher, though. I'm waking up in the morning, I'm davening nets, I'm waking earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm saying tikkun chatzot. It doesn't make you kosher. Rabbeinu said, even if a person, it doesn't matter who he is, if he can be the greatest one, Admor, a rabbi, or maybe the tiniest one of them all, he cannot be a kosher person if he doesn't have one hour of it bodedut. One hour of it bodedut every day. You cannot be kosher even if you have the stamp. <laughs> you, you're a koshering thing. You, make, you say that's kosher, that's not kosher. Even if you sit in the head of that beidin, and you're saying that is kasher, that is not kasher. You're not kasher until you have one hour it bodedut. And I was standing once in a situation that a lot of friends of mine were involved in, and we spoke about it already a few times. And a few of the students of Rav Shalom made a mistake, and I was one of those people that made that mistake six, seven years ago, maybe more, even eight years ago. And Rav Shalom said, all of you guys that made that mistake, it's because that you don't have one hour it bodedut. And we're doing it, I'm doing it bodedut, thank God, I think, I, maybe, I don't know, I haven't missed a day, maybe, maybe one, two days, I don't remember. But probably haven't missed a day, at least 12, 13 years of, of my life, I'm doing one hour it bodedut every day, so... We were doing it bodedut in the day that he said that we don't have it bodedut, so how can it be? And I asked him, I came to him, I asked him, how did, why, why you said that those people don't have it bodedut? So he said that just to spend one hour with Hashem it barach, it's true, Rabbeinu is defining it as it bodedut, but it's a, it's a default, it's only it's after the fact, it's bediavad. It's only if you didn't have words to say to Hashem it barach and you were stuck over there sitting in front of Hashem and you were not able to talk, so then okay, consider as it bodedut. Sometimes you need the quiet, you need to relax, you need to come down, you need to come back to yourself. So okay, it's in, in a certain way it's it bodedut. But that is not the it bodedut that Rabbeinu is talking about when Rabbeinu is saying that we need to have it bodedut. When Rabbeinu is saying that we need to have it bodedut, it means that we need to have an investigation on, on ourselves on daily basis, every day, to check where am I holding? Am I permitting myself to sin? Am I allowing myself to do things not in the right way? What is my beliefs? 
Am I doing right? For an example, there was a person that was working here with me, with us in the center. And I felt like he's not doing his job a few months ago. And I told that person, listen, why, why are you still with us? You're not, why, why, are you, why are you keep on working with us? You're not with us. You're not, you don't feel like that that's the purpose of your life. It's not the meaning of your life. So why, why, what's the use? Why are you doing it? So he told me, you know, after a long conversation, he said, okay, look, I want to do it, but I do it about it. So I told him, great. And he came in the day after and he told me, listen, I was lying to you. I was doing it only for the money. I was working every day with you because it was very comfortable for me to take money. And actually, I, I'm i planning to leave soon. <laughs> so I told him, okay, so maybe you're going to do the right thing to live now and not just to lie to yourself and to me and to pretend like you. He said, okay, you're right, I'm apologizing. And he was at least straight enough to say the truth, that he was wrong. But how many times a person can do things for money and to deny the fact that he's doing it because of money? And then he lets hell control his life because now he's a slave of money. So he's doing things now for money. And he's imaginating for himself, like, no, I'm in the purpose. I'm... And he's doing it because he's afraid. I felt myself in the last years that I lived in Bet Israel, in, in the Haredi area over there, that I was not myself. It wasn't me at all. And I was always hiding and fighting and denying and arguing with my... And I was pretending to live my life, but it wasn't me. I already wanted to, to run away. I already felt like that's it. It, 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 was, it was after the end already. So, uh, how, how long are you you're going to pretend? It depends. And if you have one hour, it's what to do. If you're really checking yourself, what, what's going on with me? I'm waking up scared in the morning. I'm going to sleep sad and frustrated and broken every night. So, is that the life that I want to live? That, no, and I'm fulfilling my obligation. That's it. That, for that, you're here to fulfill your obligation. That's the purpose. That's the meaning. We're here in such a unique world, with such a deep and, and amazing relationship with the Creator that is revealing Himself to us every day, offering to every one of us opportunities and options to connect ourselves to a, a divine world, to a world that is above all constrictions and all limitations. And God is opening for us gates of purity and holiness, of wisdom that is impossible for us to understand. Things that Moshe Rabbeinu was not able to understand, Hashem came and, 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 and He taught it to, 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 to others. Things that Borolam can give you are, are, are beyond human reach, beyond the, 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 the limitations of this world. And God is offering that to you, but in what it depends, in, your, in the honesty, in your point of truth. If, if you really want to commit yourself to that process of, of nullifying yourself to Hashem, to what that Hashem wants. Not if it's comfortable for me. If it's comfortable for you, you're in the hands of, of Yetzirah, for sure. If you're doing, if you're taking the decisions because that is more comfortable for you, that is the right way for you, because, and you don't check yourself, why am I doing it? So then you're cheating, then you're lying, then you're stealing. You can steal, you can steal your, the heart of your wife. You can steal the heart of your children, the trust of your family. And you can pretend, no, what do you want from me? Um, and you're not there. And you're not really there. You're not your best, the best friend of your wife. You're not the father of your children. You're not. You just want to have peace and quiet already. That's what you want. And for that, you're going to be very polite, you're going to be very nice, you're going to, you're going to behave, you're going to have your manners, you're going to take her to lunch, you're going to take her for dinners, you're, going to, you're even going to make some effort once in a while. And you're doing it, I don't want to be over, you know, to, to be rude, but you can do it for your lusts and for your desires. You can be nice to a person because... You want to sleep with her, it's your wife. You, you're going to be nice to her because you want to sleep with her. That's what, what, what are you making her to be? 
if you're going to be nice to her because you want her to be with you, so what are you actually, what are you making her? What, what, what actually she become to be for you? You're paying her. That's what you're doing. And now with your children, the same. You're just being nice to them and you're sitting with them. And, and what, what are you buying? You're buying quiet. Okay. So I, I cannot deal with those things when they're bothering me from inside. When I see that I'm not straight, it, it makes me sick. I just, I can't stand it. It makes me upset on myself. I just, I can't. I can't deal with it. When I feel that I'm doing things with people because I want it, immediately I'm saying no. It was a person that was teaching my children for years. And I felt that he doesn't feel like coming and teaching them. And I said to myself, okay, so... Why are you dragging him and all of the time you're convincing him and asking him please to come and maybe more? And you don't want to teach them. Go home. So it's okay. So I send him a text. Please, let's, let's finish. It's okay. We're going to move on. But I saw how hard it was for me to, to admit that I'm lying to myself so long, for so long and keep on paying him and, 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 and asking him, please come and yes, and we will and, and convincing myself like I have a partner here. And he's not there. He's just for the money. And I felt it. So I told him, hey, let's, you know, I, I think my children, they, they deserve more. And he said, okay, great. And that's it. It was so easy for him. Yeah. But th the problem was that, that I was denying it. Why? Because for me it was so comfortable. I'll pay. He's a good rabbi. He's going to teach. Everything's going to be quiet. And that's it. Oh, now everything is cool. And he is. For him it's also comfortable. He can lie to himself also. And everyone are lying. And it's all quiet. And, and politically correct. And, but you lose the souls of your children. Your children cannot learn from a rabbi that doesn't want to teach them. If the rabbi is coming for the money, they will not going to receive your achamayim from him. <coughs> Maybe it's better for them than to hit the streets, but, <laughs> but it doesn't, that's not what you want to give your children. So you need to be brave enough to say, okay, let's, let's cut the nonsense. Let's, let's, let's say the truth. <sighs> So, Rabbeinu is saying, Gam al yedem echad kaf, also by clapping the hands, mevatel ha machloket. A person can cancel the arguments. Ki kol ha machloket nimshachim ibchinat korach al aron. Because all of the arguments are coming from the aspect of korach on aron. Korach is fighting with aron. Why korach is fighting with aron? Why korach is not fighting with Moshe? We thought that Moshe was the problem. No. Moshe, he took the decisions. But the jealousy, the envious, the bad midot were because of Korach looking on the share of, of Aaron. Everyone saw that Moshe was different. To argue on, on Moshe, it's a problem. No one really can say that Moshe is not unique, he's not special. But Aaron, who is Aaron? The, the thing was that they jealous that Aaron, that Korach jealous that Moshe gave the, the, the second, the, the, the appointed Aaron to be his, his like deputy, his the viceroy, the one that's going to be the, 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 the Kohen Gadol. And, and so it was very easy to say no. It's not right. Moshe is giving it to Aaron because Aaron is his brother. But the truth is that Hashem Barach was choosing each and every one of them because of his qualities, because of his purity. And what can you do that in one family you had three angels? What can you do if three angels born in the same family, Moshe and Aaron and Miriam, what can you do? Is it their problem? Now Aaron is not supposed to serve Hashem because you feel not comfortable with it. So... Aaron, the thing with Aaron was that Aaron was holding Midat HaShalom. 
Aaron was always holding in that midah of peace and he was nice to everyone and he was polite to everyone and even Rabbi Nachman is explaining that that when Korach came to argue with Aaron so Moshe said Mau Aaron kitalinu alav go check on, on Aaron, go try, test Aaron, talino alav, go complain on him, go argue with him, and you're going to see, ma hu Aaron, that Aaron is nothing, he will not going to argue with you. Go look how humble Aaron is, that even when you're going to fight with him, you're going to curse him, you're going to argue with him, he won't answer your word, he won't fight with you, he won't attack, he won't fight back. Why? Because he's so humble. So from that you should understand his greatness, that... You for sure would fight. Why Korach lost his mind? Because Moshe told him, you need to shave your, your eyebrows, your gabot. And he looked so funny. He, he, he just, they, they shaved all of their hair, the beard, the eyebrows, the, the hair, everything, the armpit, everything. They just came like, like, like uh, out of Auschwitz, uh, back to the, to the tents. So... He, he wasn't able to deal with that shame, with the insultings that everyone look good, everyone are important, that only to him, they're making fun of him. That's how he felt, like, hey, what the, they're, they're mocking, they're laughing at me, shaving my eyebrows, what's going on? He took off my hair, all of my power, so his beauty. So you see that Korach was not humble, wasn't able to deal with that, what, what, such a test. <laughs> shaving his eyebrows, he couldn't handle that, and uh, and and he was jealous with Aaron. And Aaron, Rabbeinu was telling us that Aaron was holding Midat Shalom, and Midat Shalom is the first letters of the verse Da Mashet Ashiv Laipikos. You should know how to argue with the people that have thoughts against Hashem. The wisdom is that even when you hold Midat Shalom, that Midah of peace, and you want to be friendly with everyone, and you have to want to have mercy and to love everyone, you need to know how to back up yourself, how to be able to fight for your family, for the sake of your nation. If you want to be nice and kind, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to sell your children and your wife to be slaves of, of, of someone that you should sell your nation for someone else because you're so humble. That's not real humility. Shalom, it means Dama Shetashib Laipikores. Okay, Ani Shalom, Vechi Adaber, Hem Ala Milchama. David HaMelech is saying, yes, I'm a man of peace. Am I going to talk? I'm not going to talk. Hem Ala Milchama. They're fighting with me. So then what he's doing, he's fighting back. He doesn't, okay, so you're fighting, okay, so it means we need to go, it means we need to die, it's okay, kill us all, and let us die. No way. No way, he's fighting back. Even though that he's a man of peace, when it's a time of war, he knows how to fight. He knows how to be soft when he needs to be soft, and he knows how to be strong, like, like a stick, and to hold a knife, and to hold a weapon when he needs to hold Midat Shalom, it doesn't mean that you always surrender, that you always give up, that you always give to everyone, whatever they want. That's not humility. That's not humility. Yeah, it's not chesed. That's what we said in the beginning, that it's rachmeach zari, that it's mercy that it's, that's in the hands of the Sitra Achra. That the Yetzer Ara is tricking the person to think, oh yes, I'm going to be so righteous, I'm going to be so pure, I'm going to be so humble, I'm going to let everyone step on my head and destroy my house and my family and going to take everything away from No, and I'm going to be humble. That's not the will of Hashem. You see that Hashem Yidbarach himself is Ish Milchama, he's a man of war. Hashem himself, Kel Nekamot Hashem, is revenging, he's fighting. He will not going to let no one that done something wrong to run away with no punishment. No way. Hashem is, 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 is God of truth. Hashem Elokechem Emet. He's going to bring the truth, going to reveal the truth. Now, if you want to connect yourself to Hashem, you need to connect yourself to the real Hashem, not to how that you pretend to believe that Hashem is. No, 
No, Hashem is... You're making up, Hashem. You're making up idols. You're, ma you're building idols now. You're creating idols. If you say no, you need always to give the other cheek, no matter what they do to you. You're making idols. Hashem is not like that. Hashem is not like that. Hashem never said that. Hashem Midbarach said eye for eye, tooth for tooth. There is judgment. There are rules. There's nothing like that. That he's going to go and going to kill him and we're going to feel so bad. No way. What do you mean? It's our brother. We're going to fight for him. We're going to save his life. You want to let someone kill you? For what? Why? The Torah is saying, If someone comes to kill you, you need to kill him first. What do you mean? Okay, he came. He came first. <laughs> so what? What do you mean? If you let him kill you, so you're going to let him kill others. After he's killing you, he's after your family. Your kids won't have nothing to eat. What do you mean? You No. What do you, what, that's humility? That's not humility. A humble person is a person that is connecting himself to Hashem and asking, like we said before, he's got it both the dude. He's asking Hashem, what do you want from me today? Oh, today it's a time for fight? Okay, we're fighting. Today it's a time to be humble and to be quiet? Okay, great. Today I'm going to be humble. Check it. Don't say, no, I'm always humble. No, I'm always this. I'm always quiet. I'm always letting everyone step on my head. No way. That's not the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem Barach is that you're going to serve Him day by day, day by day. Every day you're going to check, Hashem, what do you want from me? Hashem, what is my job? Hashem, what is the purpose of me being awake today, sitting and learning Torah, to Torah today? What do you want me to learn from this Torah? What is the message? What should I do? If you're going to listen to the voice of Hashem, you're going to see how many wisdom, how many wonders, how much wisdom there is inside every verse. Every verse you can interpret it in, in at least 70, 70 ways. At least 70 ways to understand every verse. Anochi Hashem Elokecha. What? That's it. I'm your God. 70 ways to understand it. Bereshit bara Elokim et HaShamayim bet Aretz. Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai took the word Bereshit and wrote 70 explanations on the word Bereshit that we can write 70,000 books and we won't cover the, the meaning of what that he wrote in Tikkun Azor. On the explanation, the meaning of the word Bereshit. One word, Bereshit, that's it. You can, he just opened our eyes to understand that the depths of the Torah are endless. You cannot find all of the answers. So to define for yourself, no. God is like that. And I'm serving him. I need to wake up every day before of nets. I need to stand up Shmonaisra net. That's it. How how much you want to, to cancel Hashem? How how narrow, how thin you want to make Hashem to be? That's it, that's that's Hashem. Shulchan Aruch, that's Hashem, and that's it. Cannot move, there's nothing to do. Okay, I just need to follow the Shulchan. That's it. You're a droid. You're a robot, what are you? You're a program, what are you? You're a machine, you're a computer, you, you're working by rules, that's who you are. No, Hashem gave you emotions, Hashem gave you a heart, gave you a soul, gave you feelings, gave you thoughts, gave you dreams, gave you desires, gave you powers, gave you, gave you talents, abilities, gave you wisdom, thought, things. Oh, what, what's going on? We know Johnny, he knows every, every song that's been written in the 80s. So now that's it. He doesn't, he's unemployed. Why? Because he wants to keep Shabbat. So that's it. He can't, he doesn't have what to do with, with, with all of his information, with all of his desire and love for music. He likes songs from the 80s. That's, that's his sickness. That's what he likes. Now what are you going to do with that? That's it. It's dead. No, you want to be about Juva. That's it. Take your heart, put it in the garbage, and that's it. Let's cancel Johnny. No, you cannot. Hashem made me to be who that I am. Hashem gave me that love. Hashem woke me up to love those kind of music and those songs, and I know so much about it. And I, Hashem Itbarach, He chose me. Hashem Itbarach, He gave me. Hashem, okay, what can I do with it? Great. That's the question. How can I use my holy desires for Hashem? Who said that they are holy? My, my heart is telling me. I feel happier when I hear those songs from the 80s. I feel like it's giving me power. It gives me a will to live, to wake up in the morning. 
if I'm not going to hear it, I know that I'm for sure not going to wake up to pray. I know that if I'm not going to listen to my music, to things that makes me happy, for sure I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to drink, I won't be happy, I won't get married, I won't have a house. What do you want me to hear? Every day of my life. What? Only Haredi music? I'm sorry, there is not enough music for me to be happy. There is not enough music for me to be happy. So I need to create my own music. I need to make my own songs. I need to, I need to, I need to cheer up myself for now. So you want me to depress myself and to kill myself only because there is some police, Haredi police, that is working on, 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 on killing my will to live? No way. Sorry. I told you, we're in a war. We are in a war. Because Yetzirah, he's not afraid of no one and he couldn't care less. And he wants to use every tool, every power, every trick that he can use to kill and depress the souls of Am Yisrael. That's what he needs to do. That's his job. To fight, to destroy you, to kill your will to live. So he's going to tell you, look, you're not fulfilling your obligation, you're not righteous, you're not pure, you're destroying, you don't know. Rabenu said that you're not allowed to listen to music that's been written, that's been played by a goy. Rav Dror! Rav Dror! But I also read the Torah. And I understand that that last Hashem is fair with Torah that if you're not going to understand that God is bigger than the Torah, we're worshipping the Creator, we're not worshipping the Book. We're children of the Creator, we're not slaves. You can choose to be a slave, but you can choose to be a son. And the Orachayim HaKadosh was saying even higher than that, you can choose to be God Himself, like Rabbeinu said, that a person should pray with such an intention that you will be able to say, Yei Ratzon Milfanai, may it be my will, that you're going to become a partner with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ki tereh shor achicha, you're going to see the animal of your brother. The Orachayim HaKadosh is saying, shor achicha, your brother, it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu, your brother. Now your brothers. And you're on a mission, you and your brother, you and your partner, you're on a mission. To do what? To save the animals. The animals are Bnei Israel that fell, that went off the derech, that are now acting like animals with lusts and desires and fears and angers and frustration and, and they're confused and okay, great. Now I can see it? Wonderful. So I'm a partner with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave me the eyes to see that there is a way to help, so he made me a partner with equal rights. So now I see that the partner is not cooperating, he's hiding his face. You can have complaints to Hashem Barach also. And then what Hashem Barach is answering you? Nitzchuni banai, nitzchuni banai. I want you to win. I want you to win. That's my desire, Hashem is saying. I want you to win. Hashem is saying to Moshe Rabbeinu, Heref mimeni vashmidem. Give me the power, leave me alone, and I'm going to go and destroy them all. What? Hashem needs the power for Moshe, that Moshe will leave him alone. And if Moshe will not going to leave him alone, so Hashem is not able to do anything. Yes, Hashem is saying, Tzadik Moshe lirat Elohim, who controls me? The righteous man controls me. That's wor those are words of Hashem. Hashem Barach said, Tzadik Moshe lirat Elohim, that the righteous man got the power to control the fear from heaven of Hashem. Means that he controls the will of Hashem. That Hashem, Retzon Yere'avia, said that Hashem is going to follow the will of his, of his righteous people, of his soldiers, of his children that are committing themselves to his will, to do what that he tells them to do. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu is decreeing something and the righteous man is cancelling that decree. That that righteous man decides that something is going to happen. He says, yes, you're going to have that salvation. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is following and keeping his word. Why? Because that righteous man brought himself to that place 
that he's loyal to Hashem. Eved Neeman Karata Lo, you called him a loyal slave, and that's it. And now he's loyal, now they're equal. When you become to be loyal to Hashem Yidbarach, that's it, it's loyalty. Now you and Hashem Yidbarach are working together. Now, like we said before, what's the trigger, what's the test here? That you're going to straight up your heart to be loyal to Hashem Yidbarach. That you're going to be loyal. Not that you're going to be satisfied. No, look, I'm fulfilling my obligation. That It's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's empty. You're going to be rewarded in the world to come. You're going to have a list of, pra of praises. Yeah, he was keeping Shabbat. Great. You won't feel no satisfaction in the world to come. You won't feel no pleasure. You won't feel no satisfaction, no joy from those lists of mitzvot and good deeds. You won't feel Hashem. Why? Because Hashem was not part of it while you kept those mitzvot. You were keeping Shabbat, but Hashem was out of the picture. You were teaching and learning Torah, but Hashem was out of the picture. So even in the world to come, okay, you're going to have... It's like a, a millionaire with a lot of money in his bank, and he's not using it. So he's like the, the poorest person in the world. He cannot use his own money. He's got millions. It's written. The, yeah, you, on paper, you have millions. And you eat one meal a day that your wife or, 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 or you have a uh, worker that makes food for you because you're so rich. And that's it. <laughs> I've been to houses <laughs> in the U.S. They don't know how to wash dishes over there. They don't have a clue. They don't. Really? If she's got a cup in the sink, she doesn't know what to do. She's lost. She, oh, well... Uh, where is the where's where's the woman? Where you can call the woman? She's stuck. There is a there is a cup in the sink. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do. She's stuck. Oh, we need to call her. <laughs> we need to call the woman. <laughs> there is a cup in the sink. I need you to take the to clean the cup before you finish your shit. Before you go home, please. <laughs> well, you can watch one minute for the side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Israel, I'm Israel. Ah, so poor. Can't wash a cup. Really, I, I saw that. We were, I was shocked. Me and my wife, we couldn't believe what we see. People live for 20 years in their own house. They don't know what they, what they have in the drawers, in the closets. They don't, have, they don't know where the plastics... They, they themselves, they don't know what, what's going on in the house. <laughs> she needs to drink she... someone will bring it so the Yetzirah doesn't mind that the person is going to fail that's, that's what he wants and he doesn't care if you are so strict and strong and stubborn and you want to be religious Yetzirah doesn't have no problem with it he says okay, great collect Torah, collect mitzvot when I'm going to take you I'm going to take you with all of that. It's, it's very useful for, for the Yetzirah. Yetzirah doesn't care. The only thing that can make you climb and achieve high, huge things is your point of truth. If you're not going to surrender, if you're not going to let the Yetzirah overpower on you, conquer you, destroy you with pleasures and with satisfactions and with imaginary success of being I don't know what, if you find yourself quiet and relaxed and calm, something is wrong. It means you're stoned, you're drunk, something is wrong with you. If you're cool with your situation, it means something is totally wrong. You need to feel a pinch in the back all of the time, like, where am I? All of the time, you need to wake up yourself. Where am I holding? What am I holding? What am I doing? Is that the will of Hashem in Barach? Who is purifying you? Avichem Sheva Shamaim, God, Father in Heaven. He's the one that is purifying you, corresponding to your intentions, to the purity of your heart. Kefum Tzara Agra. As much as you're going to make yourself sorry, not sad, not depressed, sacrificing yourself for the purpose, trying to do the best that you can. Okay, you have a child. Now, what do you want from me, Hashem, with that child? I saw people not able to deal with their children at all. The kid is inside the house for a minute. Whoa. You see, it's too much, he's saying to me. 
You see why? Why? It's too much. <laughs> one kid is crossing the living room quietly from one side to the other. Whoa! <laughs> why? Because he wants to sleep. He wants to, to rest in peace. He doesn't. We're going traveling with five ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, you know, 24-7 with, we're with them. And, 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 and all of the time it's a, it's, a, it's a struggle. All of the time it's a war. It's, it's, it's all of the time you need to, you know, it's, you go with the herd, you know. Every moment, okay, let's do this. Okay, let's do that. You, you, you're managing you have a factory cooperation on your mind. It's, no, it's not five kids. It's five, it's my kids. <laughs> It's not, it's five, it's five boys of mine, it's Mishugayim, it's the madness, and they're sweet, they're good, they're cool, they're nice. But, <laughs> it's a bonfire. You cannot be quiet, there's no quiet. But you see, you can manage, okay, you deal, okay, you sit with him, and then you sit with, if you're not ready to sacrifice, to give from your time, that's the will of Hashem. Now what Hashem wants you, no, I'm sending them to the best school, is it at least two hours drive? Yeah, okay, yes, I'm sending, sending you the check. People sending their kids, yeah, he's learning there and she's learning there and they're over there and quiet and yeah, no, my son is in the best school. You're right. It's the best school for him to know how to grow up on his own, grow up on his own and to be independent and to take care of himself, and, and to find his way in life, you're right. He's not your child though, just, he's learning in the school or something. You gave up on your son. We're not saying don't send him to learn, send him to learn, but I spoke with a woman a few months ago, she told me about her children, they're learning in a different state in the U.S., she said, yes, Bezat Hashem, I'm a little bit afraid of what's going to happen with our relationship. They're a little bit upset on me that I send them to learn in another state. I told her, okay, so what do you do with it? She said, they're supposed to come in three months and I hope we're going to see it and we're going to talk about it. In three months they're going to come. Now they're upset and she don't know, she's worried what's going to happen and she's going to discuss it with them in three months when they're going to... She's shooting herself in the leg. That's what, or, or, or their children in, in the head. They cannot hold on three months with that thought, my parents abandoned me. Now, after three months, it's already a dead deal. It's a dead horse. It's, that's it. it. You cannot give him his soul back. If he now, after a week, feel betrayed, if you're not going to fix that mistake, it's done. After three months... It's a new person already. It's a different person with barriers, with walls, with, with, with denies, with, with patterns, with, with new hobbies, with new solutions, with new friends. It's not the son that you sent to school three months ago. It's a different person already. So where is it all coming from? From that point that the person allows himself because of his own comfort to lie to himself. To make up stories, no, I'm sending them to the best school, no, my wife, I'm giving her everything she needs. You're buying your quiet, that's what you're doing. You're buying her off with money, you're buying her off with, with gifts, with whatever, whatever she's demanding. And you're not doing it out of love. If she needs something and you're not there, she will find that thing. And you're not going to be the one that gave it to her. So that's it. It's the end of your relationship. It's not going to be a relationship. It may be, it can be a very good deal, very good business. Maybe you can cooperate. Maybe, maybe you have nice agreements between you. That's not the purpose. There is no soul to it. No neshama. No life in it. It's not real. It's not the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem Barach is that we're going to be people of truth. That we're going to be ready to sacrifice, to give. If we just want to receive salvations, I'm sorry, we're not going to have them. It's not going to come. Only if we're ready to give and to sacrifice, 
then you're going to see results in your private life and for all of our Israel. Only like that. Only like that. I'm ready to be the first one. I don't mind to run into the fire. I don't have a doubt that I'm going to succeed. I'm very happy to do it. Even if Chas Shalom, a person is going to die, I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to sacrifice. I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. Because I feel like I'm doing the right thing, so who cares? I'd rather to die as a person of truth than to live my life as a liar. Who can stand that? Who can stand that? It's a free choice, and you choose, and you choose every day. And you need not to allow yourself to choose things that you're going to feel like you're betraying yourself. Even if you made a mistake, if you're doing something wrong, at least come and apologize. At least come and say I was wrong. If you see that you're doing things wrong, at least come after the fact and apologize. Say to your wife, listen, honey, I'm sorry, I was wrong. At least say that. If you're going to admit and going to drop it off, you're going to say, okay, I, that is my level. I'm sorry that I'm holding in that level. So they're going to forgive you on it from heaven. It means they're going to give you a ticket to set yourself free from that. They're going to give you solutions, advice. Suddenly you're going to find wisdom, understanding how to climb up from that mess, from that confusion. But if you're going to keep on denying to yourself, no, what do you want from me? What can I do? I'm, I'm, I'm just a man. I'm just a person. I'm just a human being. I, I'm, I'm also tired. I'm also this. I'm that's your end. You're, you're destroying your end. Because you're limiting yourself. You're closing the story. What's going on? Didn't we say to shush our mobiles? Yes, we did. So, if really we want to find Hashem, so we need to prepare ourselves for it. That's what we need to do. If you want to have miracles in your life, so you need to be ready to live your life in a miracle. If you want to see salvations, you need to be ready to save and to bring salvations to others. Like that you want to live, that's how they're going to let you. That's how they're going to help you. If you really want Hashem, you're going to find Him. But if you don't really want to, or let's say, if you still haven't found Him, so don't think that it's because that He's hiding. You need to understand that you have to take responsibility on it. If Beit HaMikdash haven't been rebuilt yet, means that the generation is not worthy and it's like that we destroyed it. So you need to live your life with the understanding that you haven't built it yet. And if we're going to be strong, one person alone cannot bring the Geula. This is why I'm giving classes. If I would think that I'm able to sacrifice myself all of the way and then to bring the Geula, I would do it. What's the problem? To jump from a cliff, to throw myself to the fire, to, I would do it. If I would think that that is the right way, that I can put so much pressure on one point in Avodat Hashem, that my limud can bring the Geula, that my Tfilot can bring the Geula, I would do it. If I would think that 24-7 of my Bodedut will bring the Geula, I would do it. What's the problem? It's not a problem to be in 24-7 in, in Bodedut. You just talk to Hashem. You just, what's the problem? Everyone that is talking to you, you say, you're acting uh, funny. What's the problem? It's not a problem. If, if, if I would, but it's not the solution. It's not a redemption for one man, for one person. It's Gulat Israel. It's redemption for the wide world. So everyone needs to wake up.
So what that we need to do is to find that handle that, that's going to make all of the world turn upside down to the other direction. 180 degrees opposite to salvation. So everyone needs to make students to believe in himself that he's able to make a change in the world, to work on ourselves, to benefit, to work on our midot, to become to be better people and to believe that every development that we experience in our own life is helping in opening ways for other souls that depends in us. If you work on yourself to be a man of truth, other people will find the power to do the same in, in their own cottage in front of the sea with no connection to you. They never heard about you. But suddenly, they're going to stand in front of the mirror and they're going to say, you know what, today, that's it. I'm not going to lie to myself anymore. And it's your merit. If Hashem will see that you need to see it, He's going to let you see it. Once in a while, you're going to see people are saying, whoa, because of you, thank you, you don't know, you gave me power, you... because you're weak, so you need chizuk, you know, so Hashem is going to cheer you up. But when you're strong, and you just do your job, you don't know how much you're, you're harvesting, how much you're succeeding. Spiritually, when you deal with your fears, when you're confronting your fears, and you do it by the dude, and you talk to yourself, and talk to Hashem, you say to Hashem, give me powers, open the path for me, I want to find the truth. In those moments, what that you're changing, how that you're changing the world, you don't know. You're saving people, people are deciding not to commit suicide, people... I went every place that I came, literally, maybe I need to say almost every place that I came. People are coming to me, you don't know. Today a person asked me, what are you doing? You're going to, I'm going to a class. Who, which class? Rav Dror. What, Rav Dror? Really, you don't know? Please tell him he saved my life. In that. Every, every place I came, every place I came, what, that, oh, you have to be in touch with that woman, she said that you saved her life, she was about to kill herself, oh, you have to talk to that person, that person, his, 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 her child killed himself, and this, and, and only because of your classes, she's holding on, and, and another person, and what's going on? Who are you to make such a change? What, what have I done? What have I done? Except of really dealing with my own fears and, and, and doing it in front of the camera. If a person is just a regular sinner and he sinned, now he needs to do tshuva. He needs to go to Hashem and to apologize. But if a person was a, a huge sinner, so he needs to do tshuva in public. He needs to go and confess, confess, confess in front of thousands, in front of his community, to tell them, look, I'm sorry, you don't know what have I done. I failed you all. So I'm just being punished now in front of the camera. That's it, doing tshuva in public. That's it. Just I'm doing tshuva in public, so it's helping others also <laughs> to work on themselves. It's nice, you see. You pay. And you've been rewarded. Thank you, You know, you were talking about um, about how some people uh, are more submissive when somebody um, when people when people um, uh, have issues and they kind of submit. You know, um, is that do you, do you feel that people should be more rebuking their, their the other people being more? No, I think that when. We need to check those things about ourselves. What would you feel in that situation if someone would rebuke you? It's very hard. Rabbi Akiva is saying, If I'm wondering to myself if there is someone that is really worthy to rebuke. When I once had a very big question to Hashem, I, 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 like we just said, I asked Hashem, what, what do you want from me? What, what do you want me to do? So I opened the Likutem Moran, and over there it was written that the rabbi, that he cares about his students, he needs to rebuke them. 
So he said, okay, that's what you want me to do? That I'm, 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 I'm going to kill them? What's the problem? That's, that's what you want me to do, to, 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 to rebuke people? So I, I closed the book and I opened it again. And then it was written over there that the manhig needs to be Rahman, he needs to be mercy, he needs to reveal his kindness, he needs to smile. So I said, okay, so two things you want me to do? Okay, so that's it, that's the job. And then I opened again the Likute Moran and it was written over there, Leorech Yamim Veshanim. For years, <laughs> you need to be strong and you need to be soft and you need to smile and you need to... to so again and again you need to check what really that person is able to, 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 to receive, you understand? Sometimes a rebuke can reject a person like Jesus, Yeshu. he been rejected. The Gemara is saying that his rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua, was wrong with how that he was rejecting him. So think about whatever happened through the generations, that thousands and thousands, millions of people been rejected because they're now following him, they're following Jesus. And now they're following him being rejected from Judaism. It's a problem because they're following him. And where all of that mistake came from? From Rabbi Yoshua, I think it was Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia, that was too hard with his student, that was not able to bring him in and to, and to, and to let him, you know, do tshuva. And the Gemara is rebuking him. We're not making it up. The Gemara is saying that you're not supposed to be like Rabbi Yoshua that rejected and look now what happened with him. Look now what happened. So... It was, it was a failure of Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia that rejected Jesus. If Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia wouldn't fail in that, and he was able to reveal all of his Rachmanut and mercy and to be a little bit more patient with him, so maybe all of that thing wouldn't happen. You understand? The responsibility of the rabbi, how to be nice... And, the Gemara is saying that on Rabbi Yeshua ben Perachia. I wouldn't say it in the world if it wouldn't be written in the Gemara. We don't know. But the Gemara is saying you don't need to be like Rabbi Yeshua ben Perachia because look what happened with, with Rabbi Yeshua ben Perachia that you rejected to Jesus and look now what happened. Holocaust happened. You know? So you feel like you want to help that person. Okay, I'm going to rebuke him. You can kill him with that rebuke. So what's the use? And maybe not only him. Maybe he's going to kill a few others along the way. With, and, and it's all because of our rebuke of being so hard on, on him. So that's for sure not the right way. But maybe sometimes you need to learn how to use the rebuke. Because sometimes you need to learn how to... It's a sword that double is edge. sharp from double edge, exactly, from both sides. And you need to learn how to use one to the right, one to the left. So what do you suggest if somebody doesn't really know you, just to be even? From what that I know, and I heard it from a lot of righteous people, and it's a very good advice. And on that I was explaining the shiur of today also, that when really you want to do something good for someone else, so fix it. All, all, first of all, inside of yourself. Let's say, for an example, you see a person that he is now acting crazy. He's angry. He's screaming. He's cursing, and you want to help him. To go to him now and to tell him, "Hey, brother, why are you so angry? Don't scream." It's not. You're rejecting him by doing it. He's gonna hate you. He will not gonna like your rebuke. So, he, and he's gonna be more frustrated than angry. So, for sure, that's not the solution. What that came to me, and I understand that that's the right way, and like that Rabbi Zusha was doing, is to do tshuva on your own angers, and to clean those emotions that you have against that person that is now angry, because why Hashem Brach is showing to me that he's so upset? For what? What's the use? If not that I'm going to pray for him to be happy, or not for myself to work on my midot to fix myself. So... While you think about yourself, why am I supposed to see that person that is so angry? Maybe I need to work on myself. Please, Hashem, help me. That me and all of my brothers and all of my friends, we will never going to be angry. Look how stupid we look when we are. Not him. Me, Hashem. I remember myself two hours ago when I was angry. You know, you, I'm always angry, you know. So oh, do tshuva. And while you do tshuva, you're fixing spiritually. You're fixing spiritually 
the energy that is upsetting him right now. Because if you wouldn't see it, you, the fact that you saw it is really an evidence for the fact that you have some connection to it. And if Hashem shown it to you, means that you have a responsibility on that situation. Even if you were not involved at all, you were. Hashem put you there. Why? That's the question. Yeah. What do you want from me, Hashem? What is my connection to this situation? So I'm going to work on myself. Thank you for the rebuke, Hashem. I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for myself. When you're going to do that, you're going to release, you're going to clean that energy that was creating that horrible situation happen in front of your eyes. Thank you. Thank you.